Progress has been uneven, but progress there has been over the last decade. The strategy is now focused, the coalition is strong, and our Afghan partners are fully engaged. We have the resources, we have the will to succeed. The Afghan National Army and the National Police are beginning now to stand up on their own, which is allowing NATO troops to transition into a more training and mentoring role. The total size now of the Afghan army is over 300,000 men. Their training has been overseen by NATO forces and they're being prepared to take on that responsibility for their own defense uh, without foreign support. Both Britain and the United States, far and away the two largest contributors, of course, have begun to bring their troops home. And this is happening in accordance with the strategy laid out at the last NATO summit held in Lisbon. There's still, of course, a lot of work to be done, but we believe that we're on the right track. Close cooperation and candid communication with our allies will keep us on that path until we reach the end of combat operations at the end of 2014 and then move to more of a training and support role. These advances have been made possible. I've skipped something very important. <laughs> Forgive me. <laughs> Only by a few words. Um, this military effort, these advances which I mentioned, have been made possible by determined NATO military cooperation, but also by a civilian, a civilian effort, which has featured the deployment of development and stability instruments by a number of G8 countries. They haven't operated through the G8 as an organization because it's institutionally not all that strong, but the G8 has shown its worth as a coordinating group and in setting an example to the others. And the collaboration has paid off. On top of the progress that I've just tried to outline on the security side, Ask Afghanistan is unrecognizable from what it would look like 10 years ago when we began. Six million children now attend school on a regular basis, five times more than in the days when the Taliban were in control. More than two million of them are girls, and the Taliban were there, of course, their oppressive rules about women's role in society and the iniquities of girls' education meant that there were virtually no girls going to school in Afghanistan. 57% of the population today can access a healthcare facility within an hour's walk of their home. Life expectancy for both men and women has increased by a full 20 years since 2002, and that now stands at the age of 62. All this is possible because of the international community's collective commitment to making a success of what we began a decade ago. And the ending of our combat role at the uh, close of 2014 will not be the end of that commitment. We will continue to assist with the training of Afghanistan's forces, and our development programs will continue to help Afghans maintain a country with a government in place in Kabul and in the provinces that can do its job. A country with a civil society that provides education and basic services, and an economy based on legal trade as opposed to illicit cultivation of poppies and export. And most importantly, perhaps, a country that can prevent the forces of terrorism ever again using Afghan territory as a safe haven for operations that threaten our countries and our peoples. That will remain the focus through our meetings of NATO here in Chicago and of the G8 and Camp David. 